Yeah, fellas, welcome to the show. I got an email from, um, looks like, uh, Pimpin, and he sent me a video on uh, for sugar girls, how to ask your sugar daddy for allowance. These bitches are giving each other instructions, their brothers. That's how interesting this shit and deep this shit is going. Your allowance. Not just for the romance, after all. He's supposed to help you out. And your allowance is one big way he's going to do that. Oh, Holy shit. But you can make it a lot easier on him if you've got a few things worked out ahead of time. One tip. Don't bring it up on your first date unless he does. Don't bring up the, the allowance on the first date unless he does. A sugar daddy is someone you want in your life a long time. He's not going to want to stay if he thinks of some gold digger just after whatever she can squeeze from his wallet without actually offering him anything sincere in return. Plus, on the first date, you can usually tell how generous he's going to be and use it to your advantage when it comes to allowance. Thank for dinner. I can't watch more of this. I'll put the link to the video below. Some hoes out there. There's some hoes in this house. There's some hoes, yeah. Some serious whole nations going on out there, brothers. These women that string you out on dates, that's some minor hoishness there, brothers. They when they string you out on double dates, don't give you shit. They they're professionals at that. Be careful the professional um, uh, gold call them gold diggers, what do you want to call them, hoes, whatever, um, out there. Okay? You gotta know how to be able to spot these types of women. That way you don't invest your money. That's why I like reversing the game. Make them take me out on a date. All right? If you're not about reversing the game and you're, you got that moral stuff, a man's supposed to pay, Darnell. <laughs> Dummy nail. Yeah. Good luck with that, brother. How's that working out for you? Huh? You idiots. So, <laughs> excuse my <clears throat> vitriol. That's my new word. I see it so much these days. So much hateration out there. But seriously, fellas, I'd rather reverse the game. I'd rather have her in bed first if I'm going to take a female on a date. You know, try out first. No woman's worth paying all that much money for until you find out whether you could connect or not. In bed. You might connect out of bed, but if, you're, if your sex skills aren't up to snuff, she ain't going to come back. That's why so many males find they get a first date and they might have sex with her and she doesn't come back around. By the way, that's a message to you that overlooks so many males, goes over the head. And they don't want to they don't, they don't want to believe it. Oh God, I think she came. I've heard that a lot from men. I think she came. If your woman doesn't thank you after sex, then you ain't done your job right. Just to let you know. You know, I know I'm working with a lot of different a race of males and you have different cultural things that you learn I've learned with a certain group of males out there they didn't even know girls have orgasms a lot of them and they didn't care I have no idea how my Asian brothers are I don't know anything about their culture how they are the women um, or what they you know get the girls off I do know the black culture at one point in time that was our prime our primary mission seek and destroy that is no longer the case why do I bring race into it? Color my skin. That's why. I, I don't have that. I don't see, see color shit. That's a fantasy. So people always ask me, you know, why do you always talk about race? Also, it's, it's, a, it's a dominant theme in the dating game as well. Because remember, I was dating outside of my race. Okay? So that will quell that. Uh, try to think of stupid questions people were going to ask me and head them off in the past, so to speak. So, we have to be aware of that. We got to be make sure we give our girls orgasms. Make sure at least she bust one. Okay. If you don't know how to make a girl come, then get my product, How to Make a Woman Come. Everyone has benefited from it. Okay. I give you what I learned in my life. All of my products come from me, from my experiences out there. All right, or at least most of them. My my confidence product. Uh, that's me teaching you how to have confidence. I made little videos based on information that I learned. 
So every day you get a video lesson. You go at your own pace now. I used to farm it out one day at a day for uh, 87 days because it takes time to build real confidence. And those, there's a boot camp in there and exercise you do. Okay, because I'm trying to build real confidence. But the real confidence is built outside your door in the real world. That's where you develop the real confidence, fellas. My program will get you set for that so you go out there. Like I teach you how to go out and just say hello. That's one of my exercises. Just walk up to a girl and say hello. It, I run the problem every time as I go into the subject of males going out there and expect to pick up a chick by saying hello. And I keep trying to tell them, no, you're doing this for you. And they expect the girl to say hello back also. But Supreme, she didn't say hello back. She's not supposed to. You're there for you. You're there to overcome your issues. Not, you're not concerned with her, what she does. If she says hello back, that's nice, but that's not what you're looking for. So that's where my, my confidence program is coming at, to build real confidence. So you can walk over to a female, whether you're doing hoe chasing or you're doing it my way. Uh, I made it for both. So you guys have the real confidence. I'm not down for the hoe chasers, as you know. And if you're African American, you better be concerned. We're going to be living in a Trump world now. Okay? Um, by the way, when I was a kid, when I was a little kid, and just before that, uh, talk to, to a white chick would have got you shot. That's how old I am. Okay? There, was not a, there were not a lot of interracial uh, relations going on, at least down south. A lot of brothers were marrying women from, uh, uh, from the service. That's where inter a lot of interracial uh, people came from when I was growing up. Okay? Uh, this from my experience. Okay, I don't know. I, I don't know the whole country. My experience. Um, all my mixed uh, people that I knew in high school, growing up, and I had never ran into uh, any black and white mixtures until I got to California. In Japan, it was um, there was one black and Japanese, and the, most of them were white and Japanese. Okay. So, anyways, um, but the brothers went to the UK. They came back with a lot of uh, English wives. That's my experience. So we're gonna have to be uh, on our, our on point if you're chasing after Caucasian women. As you recall, the Succeed with Supreme show I did, uh, one of the brothers came and said he had the cops call on him. He was just talking. He was trying to pick up some chicks outside of a, uh, a store, and he came and told us the experience. And after you know he tried, they they, they flamed him out, of course, and. Um, they call the cops after that. He's just trying to get to know them. I mean, what the fuck? I mean, what the fuck? Now, we saw a pre-evidence of that with the seven hours of walking through New York and a lot of blacks saying, this is going to be, this is a setup. Why is she walking through the ghetto? Of course she's going to walk through the ghetto. Because that, that body type she had is the type, you know, that us minorities like. But also, they want to show the thirst. And also, there was a racial element to that. Of course there was. Of course it was. We live in a very racial country. Sorry to go back to talking about race. Had a conversation with a, a, a Republican, one of my clients. She sits the fence, although she voted for Trump. Um, and she was actually sent me a text after I made a comment on her, she, on her post. She totally sits the fence on the whole insurance thing. And she goes, um, Sorry, Chris, I have a bunch of Republican crazy sons, my feed, crazy, if you want to say, on my feed. Feel free to school them. And I said, nope, I saw that and didn't want to cause you any grief. After a comment I made about the, uh, you know, the Obama plan and Trumpism, they came back, you know, Republican came back, tried to attack uh, one dude in particular. I schooled him. He ain't said another word. I explained, you know, that these people actually live in a racial bubble. Like the books guy that came here, uh, that Hudson guy, all those Trumpers, they live in a racial bubble. They don't see, and they don't want to see, the violence going on all across America because of the rise of Trump. Hopefully the man will get in there and do his job as the leader and not drag us down. Hopefully he'll denounce the large amount of race because the fellow this morning didn't realize how many there were. He said, we're the majority. I said, no, you're not. I explained to him, 
him, you know, what I do. And, you know, he, most of these Caucasians, they live in a white bubble. They go to work, they go home, they look on their Facebook, they get all the, new, the Republican feed. And the Republican feed feeds them a certain vision, a certain image, instead of the truth. As the Democrats feed, feeds them a certain vision, instead of the whole truth. I look at both sides and give you guys the real truth, okay? As I do with the games, I do with life. We need truth in order to navigate our way to a successful life out there. You're struggling in your life? Guess why? You got to wake up to the truth. Okay? Trouble inside comes out on the outside. I look at these racist people, they have trouble inside. That's what causes them to hate other races so much. Fear. Fear is a negative emotion. That's my fear program that comes with the confidence kicker. I'm trying to help you guys get better at life out there, okay? Peace.